Hi class, we're here to talk about section 110, which is mathematical modeling and variation. This is a, a pretty simple section and uh, you shouldn't really have too much trouble with it. The objectives that we have, there are two of them. The first one is that we recognize and be able to apply several different forms of variation. There's going to be four types we're going to talk about. And then on the second video, we're going to use the regression capabilities of our calculators. What that means is you use your calculator to create an equation that fits whatever data set that you have. Like I said, that'll be the second video. So what do we mean by variation? Variation is just a simple, quick way to describe a relationship between two or more variables. There's four different types that we're going to work with. The first one and the easiest one is direct variation. The second one is direct variation as a power. The third one is inverse variation. And lastly, joint variation. So we're going to pick these apart one by one and, and discuss what each of them means. Direct variation is, is very simple. It, all it is is a linear relationship. We've been working with linear relationships for years now. However, in this case, instead of using our, our linear formula, y equals mx plus b, we're going to simplify it a bit and just use y equals k times x, where k is some type of constant. And there's different ways that you can express that it's a direct relationship, a direct variation. But one way is you can say that y varies directly as x. Another way you can say it is that y is directly proportional to x. Or you could say that y equals kx for some non-zero constant k. So, how do we know if a relationship, relationship varies directly? It's pretty simple. If y increases or decreases by a consistent amount as x increases, then it's direct variation. Remember that it's a linear relationship. In this particular situation, k is basically the slope. So you want a, a consistent slope, a ch the same change in y versus the same change in x. And we call that, that constant k the constant of variation, or it's called the constant of proportion. Okay, I've got some scatter plots here, and we're going to talk about what they really represent here. This is a scatter plot that does represent direct variation. Even though the data is not precise, you can see that it looks generally linear. In other words, there's a line that could fit through there um, kind of nicely. We also say that if the slope is negative, that it is said to have a negative correlation. You could also have a graph that looks like this. That is also a direct relationship. And if the slope is positive, it is said to have a positive correlation. This last example here, it's an example where there is really no relationship whatsoever. They're just points scattered all over the place. And when that occurs, it's referred to as having zero correlation. OK, 
Okay, the second type is direct variation is an nth power. And that just means instead of y increasing consistently as x increases, y changes rapidly, just like it would for an x squared graph, an x cubed graph, or any power function. And the formula, the model for it, is y equals kx to the n. So going back just one second, when we talked about direct variation, our formula was y equals k times x, where k was a constant. The only difference between that and this is that that x has a power on it. And the ways that you express direct variation as a power of n are real similar to the ones that we just had. You can say that y varies directly as the nth power of x. You can say y is directly proportional to the nth power of x. You can say y equals kx to the n for some non-zero constant k. So all three of those are very, very similar to what we just did. Our third type of variation is inverse variation. Basically means that as x increases, y gets closer and closer to zero. So graphically, you may think of it as looking like this. That's the inverse relationship. As x increases, y gets closer and closer to zero. And the formula is y equals k over x. Again, we have different ways that we can say it. y varies inversely as x. y is inversely proportional to x. Or y is equal to k over x for some non-zero constant k. The last type of variation is called joint variation. And really, joint variation will include any of those variations we talked about earlier. Direct, inverse, uh, direct as a power of n. The difference is that in joint variation, y varies uh, due to multiple variables instead of just one. So instead of having y equals kx, you may have y equals kxz. In other words, it's dependent on x and z. And there is no set formula for it because uh, there's many different ways that you can have joint variation. It isn't strictly one type of formula. And you'll understand that as we do an example. But again, some ways of saying it. Z varies jointly as X and Y. Z is jointly proportional to X and Y. Z equals KXY for some non-zero constant K. Now I did not use that formula on this because that's one of many different types of formulas that you can have for this. The key to all of this is that you have X and Y in all those situations. So Z varies due to multiple variables. All right, so what are some ways that we can do variation problems? They could ask you to find a mathematical model. Now to do that, the first thing that we need to do is solve for the constant K and then we just rewrite the equation with it. You'll be told ahead of time whether it's going to be a direct variation or an inverse variation. And we just plug our values in and calculate what k is. This is an example. y varies directly as x. If y equals 16 is x equals 12, find the model that relates x and y. Okay, so right off the bat, they tell us what type of relationship it is. It's direct. 
So that means we know that we're going to be using the formula y equals k times x. We just need to figure out what that k is. All right, so we set it up like this. If y is equal to k times x, well, that means 16 is equal to k times 12. which means that k is 16 over 12, which reduces to 4 thirds. Okay, so we found that k is 4 thirds. And then what they're asking for is what is the model that relates x and y. So we just rewrite the formula y equals kx, but we plug 4 thirds in for k. That's it. that right there would be our final answer. They could also give you a problem like this. They want you to find y when x equals a particular number. And that's no different than what we just got done doing, except we just take it one more step. So we solve for the constant k, we rewrite the equation, which is exactly what we did last time. But then we have to plug in the second value of x and solve for y. So our ultimate answer for a problem like this is going to be y is equal to some number. So let's try an example. y varies inversely as x if y equals 8 when x equals 12. Find y when x equals 8. So again, we have a problem where they tell us right away what type of relationship we have. That means we're going to start off by writing a formula of that type of model. And that type of model is y equals k over x. Alright, so since y is 8, we have 8 is equal to k over x, which is 12. And we find out that k is equal to 96. So that's our first step. Once we know that k is 96, we write the formula out. y equals 16 over x and what we're looking for is what is y when x is 6 so we just take that 6 plug it in for x solve for y why did I put 16 in there? Okay, y equals 96 over 6. Which means that y ends up being 16. 96 divided by 6 is 16. Okay, now the last thing I want to try is an example of joint variation. Okay, here we're told y varies jointly as the square of x and inversely with w. Okay, so that's saying y varies with both x and w. So the first thing we need to do is come up with uh, the type of model, and that would be y equals some constant times the square of x but inversely with w means that w will be down there okay so what we want to do right now is plug in our values of y x and w to figure out what is k 
and then we can rewrite the formula correctly. Okay, so y equals kx squared over w means 26 is equal to k times 4 squared over 8. Well, 4 squared is 16. And 16 over 8 is just 2. So that means our formula becomes 26 is equal to k times 2. And all that leads us to find out is that k equals 13. Okay, now the last thing that they, uh, what they asked us to do is find the mathematical model y equals k x squared over w. And that's our final answer. So there you have different examples of variation. That's what you're going to be doing in your homework, and uh, I think you guys will be just fine with it. So that is the end of this video.